Hey, hey, all you mentees, this is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me today for an advanced look at some of these trade paperbacks coming out from Marvel Comics on December 9th, so please stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. Before I get started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us advanced copies of these trade paperbacks. These trade paperbacks are due out in the direct market on December 9th, so that's your local comic book shop. CheapGraphicNovels.com, In Stock Trades, and Tales of Wonder, places like that. And the other thing I was going to mention is that this week is also the Giant Size X-Men Volume 1 coming out. I did an overview of this last week as I do overviews of trade paperbacks from Marvel every week. And New Mutants, the Omnibus, if you're going to ask, that has been pushed until next week, I believe. And I think, I just heard recently, that the Standard Edition is not available through Diamond yet. It's been delayed a little bit so you're only going to be able to get the direct market edition next week so far that's all i know i'll be updating some things this saturday for sure now my little girl alicia is going to help me talk about what this little book is this is the variant cover here this is heroes at home so let's look at these first all right alicia this is alicia's well alicia's hands that are helping me out she read uh these books and they're the same book these are just the variant covers there's also a standard edition cover and each one of these retails for nine dollars and ninety nine cents so alicia what are we looking at here what is this book um this is heroes at home and it shows um what superheroes are doing like during the pandemic and like spider-man and black panther Oh, okay. So, it is written by Zeb Wells, and the artwork may be familiar to you all because it's uh, Goody Hiru, and Goody Hiru has done work on Gwenpool, has done work on variant covers. Here, let's move it over here, baby, so they can see. Uh, so, they are all full one-page panels like this. What was your favorite story, Alicia? Uh, I like the story of Thor when he needs a haircut. Okay, no spoilers. We won't see if he gets a haircut or not. Now, what's your favorite thing about the book, though, that you told me? Uh, and in, in each story, mm -hmm. you can find Jeff the Land Shark, like right here. Okay, so he's hidden in each one of the stories? Mm -hmm. That is cute. So 80 pages long. Thank you, Alicia. That was a lot of help. Um, would you say this is good for kids for any age? Yes. Absolutely. How old are you? Hey, but I'm going to turn nine today. She turned nine. Today is her birthday. So happy birthday, Alicia. Thank you for your help. We both think these make really good stocking stuffers, by the way. All right, let's get started with The Amazing Spider-Man, volume, gosh, volume 10. How are we at volume 10? We don't have an OHC of this yet, but here it is. The Amazing Spider-Man, volume 10 by Nick Spencer. And I realized I just said yet, like I know something. I really don't. I swear. I would let you all know if I knew something about an upcoming Nick Spencer Amazing Spider-Man book. So this seems like a little bit of book, but there is an anniversary issue collected in here, and that's issue 49. So this does collect issues 48 and 49, the free comic book day 2020, and then the one-shot special, The Sins of Norman Osborn. So it is... Nick Spencer writing this story that's been leading up to this other big story arc happening in issue 50. So, but we had the Sin Eater uh, in the previous storyline, and I didn't spoil if that was the real Sin Eater or what was going on, if it's clones, what's happening. I will let you find out what that is. But everything is leading up to this character that's been in the background. So it's this character that's been in the background, that's been playing everybody like they're chess pieces, and we only know him as Kindred. Now, if you've read issue 50, you know the mystery behind him. Now, the coolest thing about this, we have Mark Bagley back, we have Ryan Otley, and then we have Humberto Ramos. I love that. As a matter of fact, issue 49 is a big anniversary issue, like I mentioned. It's the return of the Green Goblin. But this is my favorite thing about these stories here. It's this big team of spider ladies with Miles Morales, <laughs> who's just like the rookie out of all of them. We have a new Madam Web. And I don't want to spoil who that is, but I love it because she was one of my favorite characters long before she became Madam Web. So the Sin Eater is back here, and like I said, I'm not going to spoil whether he is the real Sin Eater or not. But this is the final volume, I think, and correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, of Ryan Otley's artwork on this book. Uh, I think 
uh, Patrick Gleason is going to be taking over. And Patrick Gleason is no rookie at all. That man has done magic over at DC, and hopefully he'll bring it over to Marvel with Spider-Man. But it's always nice to see Mark Bagley's artwork in a book, Umberto Ramos. They've been, I mean, Bagley has been on Spider-Man for well over 30 years, and Ramos has been working on Spider-Man for about a decade now. Well, no, he was doing Peter Jenkins' run, so it's been, or oh, Paul Jenkins, not Peter Jenkins, Peter Parker, uh, Spider-Man. So he worked on that book for a long time. Now, as far as the extras in the back, hey, we just looked at that. That's a spoiler for that book that we just looked at with my daughter. Of course, censoring that final page, but here's some variants. None of these are spoilerish. I love that variant. I love that variant so much. I actually bought that single issue, and I never buy single issues. But I'm a big Bruce Tim fan. And there's other variants. Have we ever used the title Green Goblin Returns, by the way? I don't remember. I was thinking about that when I was reading the book. I know we've used uh, the Return of the Green Goblin, the Revenge of the Green Goblin, but have we ever used the Green Goblin Returns? One thing I didn't say is that the book retails for $17.99 and has 160 pages. Next up is Strike Force. This is Volume 2, Fight Me. I love that cover of Angela. Oh, that, that is a beautiful cover. Um... So this is continuing the Teeny Howard run. I want to say this series got canceled, and this is the final volume. Here's volume one right here. I did an overview of that sometime last year, I want to say. But this collects issues six through nine, and then the Strike Force War of the Realms uh, issue, which really doesn't feature most of these characters that are part of this Strike Force. What I liked about this issue, though, is that we get the return of Moonstone and Ghost. Uh, from the, I want to say the Warren Ellis years of Thunderbolts, there's a series that needs to come back. But this series mainly focuses on the characters of Blade, Spider-Woman, Angela, um, those kind of characters. They're all in here, and of course the Winter Soldier. Now the artwork here is mainly done by Herman uh, Peralta, but some of it is done by Jacopo Camagni. That's his name, Jacopo Camagni. And, of course, all of this written by Teeny Howard, and Teeny Howard is the lady that is currently working on Excalibur. So this particular volume, without giving any spoilers away besides the Moonstone thing, focuses on our team, and mainly Angela fighting the Queen of the Vrida Vidrai. So that's what this big battle is that is taking place during this particular volume. And the book retails for $15.99 and has 120 pages. I uh, always love seeing Carnilla. Yes, everybody loves Hella, but the design of Carnilla from Jack Kirby's days has always had a soft spot in my heart. The extra issue is back here, which is the War of the Realms, Strike Force, the Dark Elf Realm, which, as I mentioned, really doesn't feature that many characters that are in Strike Force. As far as extras, nothing really as far as extras except for the variant covers are on the opposite page of the standard edition covers. And since I don't want to spoil that for anybody, I'm keeping that uh, as a surprise for you all that buy this. For all you wonderful spine watchers out there, here is what all the spines look like together. I'm putting in giant size because it is coming out this week. And I am going to hold this up again to show you the dimensions of that little book. Just so you're clear how big it actually is, the Heroes for at Home book. Here we have X-Force by Benjamin Piercy Volume 2. Even though it's just called X-Force Volume 2, I think anytime I ever see it on solicitations or anything, it's always Benjamin Piercy's X-Force. Or, I'm sorry, X-Force by Benjamin Piercy. But here is Volume 2, and he is joined by John Basaldua and Joshua Casara on art, and Guro, EFX, and Dean White on the colors. So here is X-Force, all of this stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, right off the bat, you know what you're in for. This is a... Really violent, amazing, freaking book. I can't praise this enough. I really need to do a Dawn of X overview or review of everything to tell you all my favorite series. Uh, the series that really didn't hit a home run for me and the series that I really didn't like. But this is definitely one that is up there for me. Mainly because of these issues right here. Um, Benjamin Piercy, to me, has grown to be one of my favorite writers this year. I read his Green Arrow run, and he's the current writer on Wolverine, and he's been working on this series. And this series from issue one surprised me. Because I didn't know what to expect when it came to X-Force. We've had so many 
different incarnations of the team of X-Force. I didn't know who they were going to use. So it's nice to see characters like Domino. I love the fact that he takes it back to the quick little relationship that Colossus and Domino had during, I think it was Dennis Hopeless' run on X-Force. But correct me, please, if I'm wrong. You all know I never take offense when I'm corrected. Um, and the other thing that I've really enjoyed about this series is how shockingly violent it's allowed to be compared to a lot of the other books that are coming out in the Dawn of X series. I don't know what it is, but, I mean, there's people just getting their heads blown off, their brains blown out. I, It's freaking awesome. So if that's your type of story, then this might be for you. It reminds me of if of any X-Force incarnation, maybe the Kyle and Yost years of X-Force. That's what it reminds me of. Uh, so this collects issues 7 through 12 and takes us all the way up until the big crossover, the X of Swords crossover, which we know is getting an oversized hardcover. Now, is it getting a trade paperback version of that? I'm sure in a few months afterwards. The book retails for $17.99 and has 160 pages. Also, good to see Omega Red, who is featured in the uh, pages of Wolverine. But then again, when you're dealing with Krakow, oh, there is a picture I need to show you all here. We've seen several pictures like this before, just portraying the life in Krakoa, on Krakoa. I just want to guess past. Just give me one day on Krakoa. That's all I want. I'll take half a day. I love the obscurity of some of these characters, like Lifeguard. What the, when the hell is the last time we've seen Lifeguard? Some of these awesome characters that I don't think anybody else liked, but it's really nice. I love to do a uh, who's who with my daughters, like who are some of these characters here. Uh, but as <laughs> let's look in the back here for some extras. I didn't need to show you all that. The standard edition covers are supplied by Dustin Weaver, who did the, I think he did the first four issues of X-Force, if I'm not mistaken. This cover right here seems to be a little throwback to the X-Men by Jim Lee issue where Wolverine and Omega Red are fighting on the cover. And then one variant. Last, but in no way least, is Thor Epic Collection, Volume 19, The Thor War. Oh man, this this is early 90s. This is, I think, 91. 1991 to 1992. So be prepared for some extreme awesomeness. Tom DeFalco's run doesn't get hardly the praise that it deserves. Uh, Ron Friends, I forgot, was a co-plotter for some of this stuff here too. He wasn't just the layout artist. Um, so he kicks off with the Mighty Thor Annual Number 16, which is part of the Korvac Quest storyline. And the features in uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy. But the main thing out of that story is that it introduces us to the new Thor of the future. Who will play a role later on in the main story arc. Now this collects issues 437 through 450 of the Mighty Thor. And Thor Annual number 16 and 17. And if you've watched my Thor reading order, you know that this takes place during the Eric Masterson years. When Eric Masterson was able to hold Mjolnir and became Thor and had most of Thor's memories. Now, Donald Blake had disappeared and Thor had been exiled, but I'll let you find out how all that plays out on your own because it is one big soap opera and I freaking loved it. I this this is the this is the stuff from when I was in middle school reading. So here's Thor uh, from the future and of course through a series of misunderstandings, Thor, Eric Masterson Thor and Beta Ray Bill fight each other. And there's a big clash of superheroes. And of course, because nobody really talks, all they do is just fight. And then eventually they're like, wait, we should team up and go after the Tomorrow Man and become the Thor Corps, which eventually became a miniseries later on. But this is, uh, damn, this brings me back memories. Issue 440. And then the big anniversary issue is in here too, 450, which is, the I think, I want to say it's the introduction of a, of a big villain that plays a big part in Thunderstrike's life. And if you watch the Thor reading order, you know who I'm talking about when I say Thunderstrike. Now, there is some dialogue that might be outdated during this time, but I don't care. This stuff was my childhood. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> yes, okay. Right here. I don't care. To me, this was such a badass moment when I was a kid where you think he's down and Eric Masterson picks up Mjolnir again and says, It's time for some serious butt pounding. I don't think writers these days would use those words, probably, or they may reword it a little bit. But back then in the early 90s, baby, that meant some serious butt whooping coming. 
Um, now, this is also has the crossover with the Operation Galactic Storm, but each part of the Galactic Storm is in here, as long as it's a Thor issue. But the Avengers and Iron Man and Captain America are not found in these pages. You have to get the Avengers Operation Galactic Storm epic collection, this right here, uh, to figure out what happens or what's really going on. So it's a big fight between the Shi'ar and the Kree. No X-Men or Scroll are involved during that run, but it does have Thor's issues that were part of that Operation Galactic Storm. And we got another annual back here. It's a Tom Rainey pinup, if I'm not mistaken, Thor versus Ulick. Now the book, of course, retails for $39.99 and has 472 pages. There's little backup stories that they started doing, that the Falco started doing, that I didn't mention. Uh, it's almost like the Tales of Asgard, but it features Balder and Sif, and they have their own little storyline that eventually intertwine with Beta Ray Bill's story. Oh, man. These books just bring back memories. It's like opening up a time capsule for me. A dork time capsule. And I want to say this is also part of another crossover, the Kang Dynasty, I think. Kang Dynasty was Kurt Busiek. Somebody take my geek batch away. This is Citizen Kang. And I've done an overview of where you can get all of this in what epic collection in the Thor reading order. But let's look at issue 450 and see if there's anything extra in the back. So issue 450 had a few other little backup stories. The main one introducing us to Blood Axe, the Executioner. And you'll see what I mean as to why he has a big role in Thunderstrike's life. And then issue 450 also had like anniversary covers. And there's a holiday special pinup. And then a article right here from the year in review of Marvel Age. <laughs> oh, this is the swimsuit stuff, right? Where's that swimsuit omnibus one day? And then if afterward by Ralph Macchio. Not telling the Karate Kid joke today. But that, as they say, is that. Now, if you're interested in any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. Beginning Thanksgiving morning, visit their bargain bin for Black Friday deals up to 90% off cover price. New items will be added throughout the day and the rest of the holiday season. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and the page count of each of these trade paperbacks. I completely think, and my daughter agrees with me, that these are awesome little stocking stuffers. And don't forget that I did an overview of the giant size X-Men uh, last week. So if you want to check it out on the channel, every week I do upcoming trade paperbacks from Marvel Comics. Let me know in the comments down below which ones you're excited about, which ones you're picking up, which ones you're passing on, which ones you're hoping that they'll make into an omnibus, and which ones you're trying out for the first time. I would love to know all those comments down below. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. Speaking of live... Old Reader, New Reader comes back tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we are going to be talking about Dan Slott, Spider-Man Worldwide. We're probably going to be covering the clone conspiracy all the way uh, up to issue 28. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you for watching. Remember, everybody, please stay healthy, stay safe, and much love to all of you.